Ready? Okay. Hi, I'm the science teacher in uh, Satchigal. My name is Eli Pivnik, and this is just a short clip to help you use the multimeter because in grade 9 science courses, uh, there's a section on electricity, we do have to use these, and a lot of teachers as well as students have trouble with them. So I'm just going to go over some basics. So the first thing is, I just want to discuss the most important aspects of electricity. One is, and that's what we're going to be using the multimeter for. The most important law or, or equation that we use is, uh, is Ohm's law. Voltage equals current times resistance. So voltage is also known as potential difference. Uh, and is measured in volts. Current, which is, has the symbol I, is measured in amperes or amps. And R, or resistance, is measured in ohms. There is a very simple analogy which, at the level we're working at with electricity, works perfectly well, and that is that voltage, you could consider, well, you could use the analogy of flowing water, where voltage would be equivalent to the height of the drop of water. So the more height of water, the more force there is behind the, the flowing water. So voltage is similar to the height of the drop, and I, or current, is similar to the volume of flow per second, because in fact, current is measured in a uh, number of electrons passing a certain point per second. It's a very big number, but it's been transformed into amps, which is a much simpler number to work with. Resistance would be the similar to the diameter of a, a water pipe, a pipe through which water is flowing. So the smaller the diameter, the harder it is to, uh, for water to flow. So that's greater resistance. So, and this, is, this analogy, like I said, it works fine at the level we're doing. So we're going to be using this in the classroom to measure, this is a multimeter, to measure all three voltage, current, and resistance. And it's called a multimeter because multi meaning many, meter meaning measurement. So it measures all three. It used to be a long time ago that we had, set, we had a separate voltmeter, uh, an ammeter, and an ohmmeter. But they're all encompassed in this one little tool, which is much simpler. Okay, so I'm just going to go through how you use each one of those. So first of all, using a voltmeter. So if you turn this to volts, it's a voltmeter. Uh, when you measure volts, the voltmeter has to be installed in parallel to whatever in the circuit you're measuring. In other words, it's a parallel uh, part of the circuit. Uh, and you can measure any part of the circuit. The scales, and this is true of all three of them, the scales are a maximum value. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Just one more thing, the voltage, when it's in series, when you have, uh, for instance, batteries in series, the voltage is added. So if you have three batteries, three dry cells, 1.5 volts each, that would be 4.5 volts. But in parallel, if you connect them like this in parallel, so that the current's coming and going through, or actually, I guess it would be going the other way, the, the voltage is not additive, and so it would be 1.5 volts. Now, I just want to show you how you use this. So let's look closely at the, at the multimeter set to volts. So you can see that there's different scales on it. This is the portion where the V is, where there are uh, different scales. So the maximum in this scale would be 200 millivolts, 2,000 millivolts, 20 volts, 200 volts, 500 volts. If we turn it to 20 volts, we're now measuring in, the numbers will be in volts. So if I use this, now I'll put this here and I'll get a battery, and we can use this to measure if the battery's any good. So you put the, the black on the negative pole and the red on the positive pole, and we read 1.58 volts. So it's a 1.5 on the battery, so it's in good shape. Now, if I just switch the uh, if I switch the scale to 2,000 millivolts, now it's going to be measuring in millivolts. So instead of 1.5 something, it's going to measure 100 or 1,579 millivolts, in other words, which is the same thing as 1.579 volts, but it's measuring it slightly differently. So the way these, these uh, multimeters work, if it's, there's an M there for millivolts, it's measuring in millivolts. If there isn't, it's measuring in volts. Um, and uh, 
you saw how I used it to measure the battery. Okay, so that's, we'll leave that for the moment. And we'll go on to using an ammeter. So if we, if we switch the, the multimeter to uh, current or, or amps, then it's an ammeter. So, and in this case, as opposed to the voltmeter, if you're using the ammeter, you want to connect it in series. So one thing after another. So you've got uh, whatever's in the part of the circuit you're measuring, you put it uh, between two things, between uh, you know, whatever it is, wherever you want to measure, how much current is flowing through that part of the circuit. So, uh, and, and note that amperes, when you, with a current, when you have uh, a number of loads, a number of different things that current is flowing through in series, uh, the, the current is the same through all of them. But in parallel, you can have different current in different branches depending on what the resistance is, depending on how hard it is for the current to go through different branches. So you can have different current amounts going through different branches of a circuit if, there's, if it's a parallel circuit. In other words, there's more than one way for the current to flow. Uh, an example of a use of this, I'm not going to show you this one, but uh, I just used it a couple weeks ago on my car because there was a drain on the battery. So to find the drain on the battery, I connected, I disconnected one of the cable, the battery cables, put, uh, put this, um, put the two probes, attached them, one to the battery pole terminal and the other to the wire so that it was in between, so it's in series. And then I could remove different fuses on the, in the car fuse box and find out where, which one uh, was using current. Um, note that there is, this is the way it's normally hooked up. I guess you need to focus in on this. Um, with, at least on this one, uh, the, the, where it says positive, wherever it says positive, that's the red terminal and the, and the red wire. Black wire would be negative. In this case, there's a different common or, or uh, black uh, socket for most things, but a different one for very high current. So it says here, A for amps, maximum 10 amps. So if you've got it using a fair bit of current, and that is, then you have to use this one. Otherwise, you might uh, blow the fuse in this device. Okay, so that is uh, amps. I'm going to go on to the third thing we're going to measure, which is resistance. So, if we switch to a resistance scale, we're now going to measure resistance, and it's now called an ohmmeter. And it's confusing, but in, when we do circuit diagrams, you can put in either a V or an A or an O, depending on what you're measuring, but it's still the same device. So, an ohmmeter, you can measure any part of the circuit, but the part must be disconnected. Because you're not measuring a current of the circuit, there's, a, there's actually a current that's, when you turn it to the ohms, there's a current uh, generated in the multimeter, and that's just used to find out how hard it is or how easy it is for current to flow through that, that part of the circuit or that device. So, for instance, if you're if you've got a well, it just happened to me actually a couple months ago, the water heater, our water heater at home was not working, so I was able to disconnect the the uh, heating element and put the two probes when it's set as an ohmmeter. An ohmmeter you can measure the resistance. And if the resistance is very high, that means there's something wrong with the, the uh, heating coil, the heating device. The current's not flowing through it very easily. So it's, it's broken or partially broken. So you can use that to see, for instance, if a bulb is good, if a wire is good, uh, if, some, if, there's, uh, if, if a switch works, those kinds of things. And you can also, uh, we use it in the course to explore how uh, how good a conductor different materials are, because a good conductor will have very low resistance. Um, so I will make a, a short demonstration of that as well. Before I do, I just wanted to say again, uh, comparing like the other um, quantities for ohms, uh, between how it changes between series and parallel. So resistance in series, resistance is additive. So if you have a 100 ohm resistor plus a 200 plus a 300, and they're in series, the current has to flow through all of them, so the total resistance is a sum of the different ones. So 
100 plus 200 plus 300 is 600, so you would have a total resistance of 600 ohms. On the other hand, in parallel, um, the resistance, the total resistance is always going to be lower than the lowest of the, of the possible paths because, I mean, if it's, if the current can flow through the, the one with the lowest resistance, it will, but it actually has two other paths making it even easier. So the calculation, it's a little more of a calculation, but not much. The total resistance is the inverse of like one over the, uh, the inverse of each of the resistances added together. So in this case, if you add up, if you calculate the total resistance for all three, it's 55 ohms, which is lower than even the lowest resistor. Uh, so I'll just show you briefly how the, the uh, ohmmeter works. So if we look at this section here, you can see this upside down horseshoe indicates ohms. And right now it's at one which is far away from the decimal point. That means it's infinite resistance. And the resistance, like I said, is current that's flowing. And if, the, if these two probes are not together, can you see these two probes? Okay, if they're not together, then there's, we're basically talking about the resistance of air and air doesn't conduct very much at all. So it's infinite. So I will change, uh, let me just start with, uh, I've got that on 2000. I'll, I'll go to the lowest scale. That's 200 ohm scale. It's still, it's still infinite. If I put them together, it should go to zero pretty much. And it, it takes a while. It's not quite going to zero. It's going to 0.8 ohms. It actually, in theory, should be zero. But uh, it's, that's close enough. And it does take a bit of time to stabilize. So um, if I put this, well, let's, let's leave that for now. I'll try a couple of other materials. Let's try a knife, a steel knife. So a steel knife, the resistance in a steel knife is a little higher than uh, when I put the knife together, but it's at 1.2, oh, 1.3 ohms. However, if I take an eraser made of PVC, I put it on that, it's infinite. Now, I can up the scale, and let's just look at that. If I up the scale, first of all, I've got this uh, at, let's say, one point, point 0.9 ohms. Well, actually, I think it went to 0.5. If I up the scale to, two, this is 20K, so 20,000 ohms. It'll now read in thousands, thousands of ohms. So if I put that here, it's going to for sure read, I was going to say it's going to for sure read zero, but it doesn't read one. No, it is reading zero. Yeah. It should read zero because, you know, there's, it isn't going to be thousands of ohms with this because it's less than one ohm. Um, so the scale is going to matter how you read it, but all you have to, to recognize is that in this case, if it's, if there was a K, that K means thousand, so you're going to be reading thousands of ohms. And that's what all these are, even though it goes to 2000 K. In the case of the volt, uh, volt meter, if you've got an M there for milli, then you're reading in thousands of volts. So I think that's about all. The other thing is that this battery in that runs this multimeter, it's a six volt, it's a little squash battery that six volts are hard to get a hold of. So I would recommend you make sure that it's turned off at all times except when you're using it so that the batteries will last because it's a pain to get new batteries. So I think that's about it. I hope that's somewhat helpful and good luck with the multimeter.